In this video, we're going to see what SAS does in the background when it computes a data step. So here's a very simple um, data step. You see the code at the top. Um, so we're going to create a data set called uh, C um, from two data sets called A and B that all live in the work library. So the first thing SAS does um, when it reads through that code is it creates an empty data set um, with the variables needed. It then checks through the code and checks that there's no um, errors in the code, no syntactical errors, and it's happy. And then what it does is creates a PDV, a program data vector. And it creates enough room for, for all the variables needed. So it goes through work A and work B and sees what variables are needed. And so it, it uh, creates them, it creates the names. So and there's a variable name, and it's a string variable, which is why there's a dollar. Uh, sign and it's of length eight and there's the variable age, which is a character, uh, which is um, a numeric variable of l of length eight again. <coughs> um, and then this PDV just goes back and forth. So it it goes to the the data set we're setting and picks up the first entry, Billy twenty eight. It goes in in order, so to speak, and then it ca carries them over to the the new data set, work dot c, and uh, and drops the drops them off basically. It uh, it then goes back, empties itself, and ca picks up um, a new set of observations. So Bob in 24 carries that back to work.c, and then it goes on to the next data set, picks up Jack 21, and goes up back and forth. So what's efficient about this methodology is um, that SAS isn't keeping a huge amount of variables in, in its memory, so it's just going one um, observation at a time. And it'll take John 31 and carry that back. So then it goes back for the final time, realizes that there's no more observations to pick up, the, the PDVA empties, more or less disappears, and the final step is accepting that this is the new data set, <coughs> This is the new data set, pardon me, and uh, it writes out the descriptive part, so the things that you can see when you use a, a proc content. So now we're just going to look at the, do, do this very quickly in SAS to, to see that it does indeed give what, what we just described. So here's some SAS code. Um, I'm just going to input the, the data sets that we need. This data set called D here, we only need it for the next part of the video when we're going to look at merging. Um, so let me just run that. So we get these three data sets. So if I just open it up, A is indeed Billy and Bob with an age, and, and B is indeed Jack and John with an age. So the first thing we're going to do is, is concatenate those two just to check that um, we get the right thing. So data work.c um, set work.a and work.b and run. So remember, again, we don't need to put in work, but, but we will. Um, it's no harm. And that's concatenated the data sets, so that works very nicely. The um, the next part of the video, we're going to look at merging uh, d data sets. So how does uh, the PDV handle the data sets when you merge them? Okay, so now we're going to look at how the, the PDV handles merge statements. So here's a code that creates um, a new data set E from two data sets A and D, uh, merging on the by variable name. So you have to remember to make sure you sort your two uh, data sets by your by variable before running this. And now more or less the same thing happens. So first thing, SAS goes through and realizes, right, it needs a variable name, needs a variable age, and also needs a variable height. Um, it goes through this, the, the code, make sure there's no syntactical errors, and it's happy with that. And now it creates a PDV with all the variables we need. And then it just w goes back and forth, so everything w will happen more or less straightforwardly. So um, goes there, picks up Billy and um, all the variables from both data sets, takes them across to work.e and, uh, and drops those off. And then it, it goes back, and the first thing it does is it checks that there's no more entries uh, on that by variable, so that um, there's no more Billys to pick up. So there aren't, so it, it picks up the first Bob, um, Bob 24 and 1 meter 79 and carry that back over and then as I said it, it comes back and now it checks whether or not there are any more Bobs left and indeed there are there's this Bob left so it just updates the PDV 
with um, with the, the new height and it takes that over and so our data set now has a bob 24 and 195 so it's important to understand what SAS does in the background if we think about this for a bit this is actually a very logical way of doing things but if these bobs were for different people, as most probably they are, since um, their their height is different, they would have to be coded different. So maybe this would be bob 2, and then you wouldn't have a problem. You just have um, a missing variable, as bob 2 would not have an age. In which case, you just have bob 2, no age, and 1 meter 95. So let's just run the SAS code for, for that and, and see how how that works. Right, so we've already got the, the data set D that we needed, so let's just uh, write the SAS code. So data work dot E, merge work dot A, and work dot D by name, and run. So if we run that, open up work.e we see indeed that two bobs have been created so it's just important to keep that in mind when you when you do things so it's important to understand how the PDV works the main point of, uh, of such a system is efficiency SAS is excellent at handling huge data sets